Another one of my favorite repairs are these antenna connectors. Customers are always ripping them off. They move the TV set or they yank on the cord and they just yank these things right off. And here I've got one that's been uh, yanked off right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it for the customer. First thing I had to do was unsolder his uh, tuner. This little section right here. I'll show you how I go about that. First thing I have to do is unsolder the back side of the tuner. And I apologize for the poor quality video here. I'm just uh, sitting here alone in my shop doing what I do most of the time. Anyway, this stuff called Wirewick, if you don't know about Wirewick, uh, you really gotta learn about this stuff. You can buy it at Radio Shack. It's, uh, it actually drinks up the solder. When you hold your iron, for example, and when I wanna take the solder off these different terminals here on the back side of the tuner, I simply push the wire wick up against the terminal I want to desolder and I don't think the camera is able to pick it up but it's, it pulls it right off. And you move on to the next terminal touch the iron to the back side of the wire wick again it, and it literally soaks up the solder. I actually did this tuner ahead of time so I don't need to go through the process but I'm just showing you. You can see all the solder that got sucked up onto the wire wick and now that I've uh, got it all unsoldered, I can simply pop my tuner module out there. A lot of times customers bring these in and they're in pretty bad shape. Sometimes I have to repair the circuit boards too. And anyway, the way these work, you, oops, you can see I just pulled off the side there. I did that rather abruptly. I usually like to take a marking pen and mark how everything goes because uh, you want to put these back the way they came off. But you can see the side comes off here. And on the other side, you've got a same thing. Now you've got the circuit board exposed. And uh, you're going to want to find where you solder on the new connector. Now I buy, I buy quantity, quantities of these at a time because this is so common. I've had as many as three people bringing these things in in a week wanting antenna connectors put on. And uh, it's good business. Anyway, um, it simply fits right in here. And then you have to pull the backside here and solder it uh, into the circuit board. Now, one thing that I generally do is I walk over to my grinder, and I actually grind the sides of these of this uh, connector before I solder it, because the solder sticks a lot better. Let me let me show you exactly what I do here. I just take the the brand new connector, and I and I rough I kind of turn it, and I I get the sides of it. Uh, kind of cleaned up there. See, now, now solder will adhere to the sides of it real well, and I also like to generally uh, taper the edge of this down a little bit, because sometimes these won't fit in the circuit board. There we go. Now I can just solder that baby on. I generally have to use my soldering gun because of the fact that it uh, requires a lot of heat. And you, you don't want to overheat these things. If you overheat them, you melt the inside of it. I had a friend that he always likes to put a connector on it before he solders it to help uh, stabilize the inside of it. Okay, now that I set the um, antenna connector in place, I can actually go ahead and solder it. Now these kind of want to fall over here, so the first thing I like to do is I take my soldering gun, I hold the trigger, get it good and hot before I try to solder it. And I'll just try to tack, tack it down on the edges. And because, because I pre-sanded the, uh, or ground, ground the side of this thing, the solder sticks to it real well. So I put a little there, a little here, a little bit more to get it to flow better. And uh, that's going pretty good. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of a space there I'd rather not have, but that's all right. As long as I don't short out that center terminal, I'm good. Now, this is a little trick a friend taught me. It's probably not a bad idea. He generally likes to take some sort of an antenna connector and pop it on here as he's soldering it. And the reason he likes to do that is he, sometimes the plastic inside here starts to get molten and soft and you, it'll get pushed to the side because you're getting this thing so hot to solder it. But that's probably not a bad idea. I'll go ahead and do it this time just for the show. And uh, get this baby soldered on here. Just about got it. 
solder's flowing on there real nice. I bet you this thing's a whole lot stronger than it was when it was first made. I've never had a customer bring one back for a second repair after I got done repairing them, so I think we're good. All I got to do is uh, pop the tuner back in, and I'm all set. Well, I almost forgot. I have to uh, had to resolder the back the back wire coming off the connector. It goes right here, so I had to resolder that too. That's good. And I generally like, when I'm done with these things, I generally like to take my magnifying glass out and really look things over because a lot of times, let's see if I can hold it in front of my camera and get it to work. A lot of times you can solder a connection and if you're not careful, you'll you'll have a little spot solder bridge going to somewhere else you don't want it. Or you'll unsolder something you shouldn't because you're not being careful enough and you're uh, causing more problems than you start with. So you got to be careful, especially with these surface-mounted components. Sometimes you can um, unintentionally unsolder one of them. So just be steady with your iron, and you should be fine. Anyway, I like to look over the board for cracks and stuff. Sometimes you'll see little cracks. By the way, uh, this is a 10-powered magnifying glass. You can buy one similar to this called Jeweler's Loops. If I didn't have this thing, I'd be completely lost. I don't know anybody that has eyes strong enough to see what you can see with a magnifying glass. This enables me to find bad, or, bad solder connections and all kinds of things I wouldn't normally be able to find. So, an absolute must in this business is a uh, a jeweler's loop, or just a magnifying glass, I suppose, if you can find one that's 10 power. So that's pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to slide it back together. I notice a lot of times when I get done soldering these, uh, sometimes the the case doesn't want to squeeze all together because of the solder around the edges so if you can do it carefully it doesn't hurt to just put it in a vise and squeeze the uh, squeeze the vise a little bit to make this thing oh, going the wrong way there to make it fit a little tighter and I remember one time a customer brought a TV back and the case had actually fallen off the tuner so I really like to make sure that everything's on there good and snug so that's pretty much ready to go you can see that's rock solid that's not going anywhere now I'll go ahead and solder it back in so I'm just gonna go uh, solder the rest of these terminals in here very carefully and um, put the back on and get paid I was thinking there are probably so many people out there that have the same problem. If there was some way I could just do these eight hours a day, I'd get wealthy. I mean, it's so it's so common. It, it, it goes fairly quick. As you can see, I'm done. Uh, everything's pretty well soldered in there. I'll double check just to make sure, but it looks like I've got it all soldered in. So, yeah, we're good. One little thing I could say here about soldering irons. Well, maybe I'll make a special video about that. But getting a good soldering iron is a must, too. And I'll explain that in a different video. Well, as you can see, it's all back and better than new. So that's all taken care of.